Hooty who all my stock market gamblers. Welcome today. I'm Tall Mike. I'm so glad you're here. What do we got going on? Well, we kind of got the markets rallying back up, right? I mean, this crack up boom might never end, right? I mean, will they rally push it to a new record high? My take is no, not this time. Don't get me wrong. We can go to a new record high. You keep printing money. You're going to get to the new record high. But right now I would use caution. I think we're going to pull back, retest the recent lows before we get to that new record high. Come down, retest the lows. Then maybe we go up to new record highs because every time the market comes down, the Fed wants to jump in and do something. They want to jump in and buy the debt. They want to lower interest rates. They want to do something. They want to prop up the bubble bigger. And the bigger the bubble, the bigger the burst will be. So when it does finally collapse, it will collapse. Probably about 80% would be my guess, but not yet. It's not time yet. They're still printing the money. The bubble's still growing bigger. We're pushing it back up to record highs. I'd be careful here. I see this market coming back down, retesting the recent low, and then maybe we take off to that new record high. That's just my take. Maybe it goes straight up to the record high. We'll see. We'll see how this plays out. But did you notice gold? Did anybody notice gold on Friday? Right over $2,500, right? Broke the $2,500 level. Gold's at a record high. You know what? Gold's outperforming the stock market for the last 20 years. It's been outperforming the bond market for the last four or five years. Been outperforming Bitcoin for the last three years. It's funny, the young people now, young people are asking me about gold. These are people that were in Bitcoin. They want to switch over to gold. Why? Why? Because gold's outperformed Bitcoin by 50% just in the last three years, right? They see it. They can tell how it's performing. Bitcoin, it can't get back above that 70,000 where gold's breaking out. Record high, record high, record high. Now, I've also had a lot of rich people, a lot of wealthy people telling me they can't buy gold. I go, what do you mean you can't buy gold? You're rich. You should have a lot of gold. They go, no, it's already at a record high. Mike, I missed that move. I can't buy it up here. This is a record high. I heard that at $300, $800, $1,000, $2,000, $2,500. I'm hearing it. Look, at gold is far from done. Now, what do I think is going to happen? What do I think is going to happen? Okay, well, you're going to get a one-to-one -one price movement. The Dow Jones Industrials right around 40,000, right? And gold's right at 2,500. They're going to go one-to-one -one with each other. Now, is the Dow going to come down to 2,500? Probably not. Gold going to go up to 40,000. It's possible, but probably not. They're probably going to meet in the middle somewhere. Is that 10,000? Is that 20,000? I don't know. But that's the time to sell your gold. Right now is the time to accumulate gold, and I would be accumulating as much as you can afford. You know, you can't put everything in gold. You got to have some dry powder just in case gold does pull back. Maybe it pulls back when the market crashes. Maybe it comes down, you know, 20% back to 2000. But gold is making that new record high, making a new record high. Well, why? Why is gold making a record high? Because the debt, the debt, the debt is accelerating, right? It's going faster and faster. Every 100 days, another trillion dollars in debt, right? And we cannot continue at this pace, although they're going to try. They're going to try. But once you get, look, eventually they're going to get a bad bond market, okay? A bad bond auction. You see what they got to sell? Just this, this year, you got nine trillion dollars of bonds come and do, right? They have to go out and find a new buyer for them because the old buyers are turning them back in, right? Okay, so the old buyers are turning the bonds back in and you got another four trillion on top of the nine trillion because we got to get those bonds sold because that's how we borrow money to, you know, we print the money and we got to sell the bonds. So you're looking at about 13 trillion dollars worth of bonds and if they get just one bad bond auction, this whole thing comes apart. It comes apart, comes falling apart. What would happen, Tom? Mike? You would see gold explode higher. You would see the bonds in a flash crash. I mean, they would just flash crash, right? No one's bid. No bid on the bonds. They can't sell them. Price got to come down, right? Rates are going to go up. Everybody goes, but Mike, the Federal Reserve is coming out and they're going to lower rates in September. I believe they will, right? I believe they might even bring them back all the way back to zero. It isn't going to matter. One bad bond auction, you're going to get the flash crash in the bond market, and you're going to see rates explode higher, explode higher. I'm talking 10, 
15, 20%, maybe higher, right? And that's just one bad bond market. But you see, they're going to try. They're going to try to keep the bubble going, keep the bubble going, right? Uh, just print as much money as you can. Now, the other thing that I like, I like silver. Now, a lot of people get upset when I talk about this, but I think 500 ounces of silver will buy you the average price home. Now, what's the average price home? Average price home about four hundred and twenty thousand dollars in the United States, right? So how can five hundred ounces possibly buy you that? Well, the home's either going to come down or silver's going to explode higher. Probably going to meet in the middle somewhere. Okay, now this has happened before. For example, gold, right? Gold became one to one with the Dow Jones in nineteen eighty two. They were both at eight hundred, right? Okay, now in nineteen sixty five, gold was thirty five dollars and the Dow was a thousand. And the Dow came down to 800 and gold went up to 800 and they met at one to one. You're going to see this transpire again. And you're lucky. You're alive right now. This is a great wealth transfer and you can get some of this wealth transferring to you if you pick up a little bit of gold, if you pick up a little bit of silver, because that's where the money's going to be transferring to, right? These assets are undervalued. Silver, what is it? I don't know, $28. Let's call for an ounce of physical. That's just round numbers, right? $30. $30 for an ounce of physical silver. Okay. Go down to your coin dealer. You buy 500 ounces, right? And you just put it away. You hide it, put it away. And you wait. You do nothing, right? You spent 15 grand, right? You could lose all 15 grand if silver went to zero, right? Now people say, but Mike, in the Bible it says gold and silver are going to become worthless and they're going to throw it out in the streets. I get all that. That's at the end of times. If the world's going to end, gold and silver is not going to help you. You're going to need a savior. His name's Jesus, by the way. Anyways, that's just what gold and silver is going to be worth nothing at the end. It's not going to save you. But in the meantime, it's going to help you a lot, right? It might get you into the house, right? For spend 15 grand. If you want two houses, spend 30 grand, put it into a couple monster boxes and wait. You will be able to buy two houses with those. But Mike, what if you're wrong? What if I'm wrong? Then you got a lot of silver, right? Okay, I mean, it could happen, right? I, I, this is just my opinion. This is just what I believe is going to happen. No, I'm not going to go buy you a house if it doesn't happen. You have to think for yourself. Now, my take is that well, and back, back in, you know, 1980 right about then, it came down to under 800 ounces could get you the average price home. This time it's going to be much bigger drop from the home price. Home price is going to collapse. Silver is going to explode higher. I think it's going to get down to 500 ounces. We'll get you the house. This is just my take. A lot of people don't think that is possible. Look at the Fed. Well, the dollar. Let's start with the dollar. The dollar's going away. It's dying, right? Do you know that? Do you know that those dollars don't buy as much when you go to the grocery store? They just don't buy as much. You see, gold's not going up. The dollar's coming down, right? Okay, your house isn't going up. The dollar is collapsing, right? If you bought your house, look at, okay, you get physical silver, right? That a quarter. Uh, Pre-1965, it's called the coin of the realm. You get a quarter, that's 1964, that's called, you got 1964 U.S. quarter, the coin of the realm. That's when we had real money in our money. They took it out in 1965. After 1965 and on, there's never been any real money in our money. Constitution says real money is only gold and silver. I suggest you get back to the coin of the realm. But if you had uh, quarters, right? Okay. Okay, that quarter now is worth about $6. That quarter turned into $6 because that's real money in there, right? So if you had $18,000, which was the average price home in 1965, and you had it quarters, right? And you bought it, it cost you $18,000 in quarters. But let's say you saved those quarters from 1964 and you still had them today. You could sell those quarters for about $420,000, right? And you could go out and you could buy the average price home. You see, the house didn't go up. The, uh, the money went down. They took away our money and we got to take it back. We got to take the power back from the Federal Reserve. We should just wipe them out completely. We should replace the politicians that don't want to go 
go back on a, a sound money standard, a gold and silver standard. But the Fed, how have they done? Let's give them a report card, right? What are they supposed to do? Price stability, right? How have they done in the 100 years they've been in existence? Well, your purchasing power lost 98% of its value. You measure it by gold, it's lost 99% of its value. So the Fed, they basically, they get an F, right? They've lost, they've lost basically all of your purchasing power, 99% of it, and they did it in 100 years. Okay, now that's bad. That's terrible. But if we leave the Fed in charge, they're going to wipe us out completely, right? They're going to wipe us out within the next 10 years. How are they going to do it, Tom? Right? Well, they're going to get that CBDC thing going through. And you're not even going to know it came through. You may be using it right now. You don't know what your credit card is. Maybe that's a CBDC, right? Maybe your credit card is a CBDC. DC and you don't even know it. See, they're not going to announce when they do it, but they're going to do it. And what they're going to be able to do is turn off your money with the click of a switch. Now, if you don't spend your money, maybe they just take some of it, right? So they're going to have what's called negative interest rates. They're going to have negative interest rates, and this is going to lead to a big problem. It's going to lead to the Great Depression. Now, in the Great Depression, we had 9,000. 9,000 banks failed. Now, the good news, we cannot have 9,000 banks fail in the U.S. now, because we we only have about 4,500 banks. So only 4,500 can fail. So it's going to be, well, people would say, well, that's a half of what happened in the Great Depression. So it's not going to be that bad. Now you're going to see these banks falling over like dominoes. Look at Silicon Valley Bank. That was just the canary in the coal mine. People think the banking crisis is over. I mean, I'm telling you, it's not over. It's not close to over. It's going to be dominoes when it's happened. You're going to be running for real money at that time. But at that time, it's going to be too late. All those digits on the screen, they're going to disappear, right? They're going to replace it with something. Maybe those digits on the screen, maybe they give you some shares of the bank. It's called the bail. And they take all your money and they give you shares in the worthless bank. It says that they can do that when you signed up for that checking account. Oh, man, it's terrible. Go and get a checking account, man. You're signing a book of papers. And it tells you that once you give them your money, it's not your money. And you you may never get it back. But my, we're guaranteed by the FDIC. Look, the FDIC doesn't have your money. They got less than 1% of your money. They cannot pay you back. Do I think they will print money to give your money back? Yes. But in the meantime, you're going to take shares in the bank to hold because it may take them three, four, five, six years. They're in no hurry to get it back to you once the bail-ins start to happen. Once the bail-ins start to happen, it's too late. When's that going to happen to all my, nobody knows. Isn't that amazing? I don't know if I knew we could plan, right? We could plan to do it the day before, but we don't know when, so we got to start planning now. You got to start putting away some real money, start putting away the coin of the realm. Now, I want to talk a little bit about the coin of the realm. That's silver, right? Silver was real money. We used to have those in the coins. We don't anymore. But here's the thing with silver. You can go to the exchanges, the COMEX and, and the London Exchange, right? The COMEX Exchange is one, the London Exchange is another. Look at the London Exchange themselves, they trade three billion dollars, three three billion ounces, three billion ounces of silver every day. Three billion ounces of silver. How much physical silver do they actually have? Well, they have eight hundred million, but it's worse than that. Okay, so they they don't have eight hundred million would still be they're trading three times the daily volume of the actual silver they have, right? But they don't have eight hundred million ounces because five hundred million of those are pledged to ETS, right? I mean, one ounce of silver is pledged 400 times. See, you got to get the physical. Don't get in this paper stuff. But they're trading 10 times. So they have 300 million ounces of silver and they trade 3 billion ounces a day. This is going to blow up, right? When people want to take the physical delivery, what it's like, it's like musical chairs. When you're a little kid, the music stops and you try to sit down and one person didn't get a chair and they take a chair out each time. Well, they're going to take a lot of chairs out when this happened because one ounce of silver is backed up by 400 people that think they own that one ounce of physical silver. Now, what do you think that's going to do to the price of silver when everything comes crashing down? Well, let's say it. Well, let's say those 400 people want that one ounce. Well, 400 people want that ounce. It isn't going to be selling for $30. It's going to probably be closer to $12,000 for one ounce of silver because this musical chair game is going to stop. This is going to come tumbling down a great Great Depression like the U.S. has never seen is going to hit it. And now, this is just my 
take. Your take may be completely different. You may be a moon boy. Prices are going up. Stock market still having the crack of boom intact, right? So maybe we're going to the moon with those prices. But remember, when you cash out, what do you get? You get dollars. When dollars become worthless, what do you have? You could have a. You could be a billionaire, right? In the stock market. But when you go to cash out, you get a billion dollars. But the dollar's not worth anything. So a thousand times, a billion times zero is still zero, right? So anyways, get your money out. Get it into the real money. Get it into the coin of the realm. This is just my take. I'm Tall Mike. You like this stuff? Give me the thumbs up. Why not? Punch that subscribe button. Get out there, everybody. Have a great day. Bye-bye now.